Fully Charged Show 2021. It was fantastic. Check out some of the EV conversions and a couple of interviews that I made while there. So we're just at Electric Classic Cars and I've bumped into Moggy here. Hi Moggy. All right Tim, how's it going? Um, I had an interesting question about uh, TVRs. So a lot of people think that I'm a bit mental for uh, doing an EV conversion on a TVR. What, what do you think? Well, certain levels of mental and, and like, you know, <laughs> putting 600 horsepower Tesla motor into a Beetle, that's probably quite high up there. TVR, it's on the mental scale, but it's about mid, I, I reckon. <laughs> so yeah, it's a good idea. Good stuff. It's a good like basis. You've got you know uh, rear wheel drive, um, uh, engine up front. So I'd say put may, most of the battery pack up front. Maybe mm, uh, yeah. uh, put something like a, a Tesla yeah. small or even a Tesla large drive unit in the rear. Get the great, great distribution rights and just keep that power. That's... Absolutely, it's all about the power. Oh, yeah. You know, you've got to have far too much power that the car can handle. That, that, that's the uh, you know uh, the litmus test for whether or not you've built a good fun vehicle. Absolutely, and uh, of course, who dies with most toys wins. There you go. Which is what you very by. important. And I mean, look at all of your toys here. They're looking absolutely amazing, especially the Beetle, of course. That's my daily driver. She is a beaut. Yeah. But no, thank you very much, Moggy, and uh, I hope you have an enjoyable rest of the show. No worries. Good, Good luck man. With TBR, mate. Cheers, buddy. Nice one. Where's the light? Where's the question? There, there is no light. <laughs> So we're uh, Saturday, nearly five o'clock. Things are quieting down uh, outside the electric classic car stand. And I've uh, bumped into Rob, uh, who's got a common gear electric car. And I, I recognised I recognized the face. Here he is. <laughs> I recognised the face straight away. And I was thinking, I know this chap. And it was from Vintage Voltage. And I wanted to ask you, Rob, how are you getting on with your electric classic car? Thanks for asking, Tim. Thanks for your interest. Um, it's great. I really bought the car to be converted. Yep. Uh, my first car was a Beetle, so originally I was looking for a Beetle. But I remember when I had the Beetle, looking at all the Carmen gears at shows, going, I wish I had one of those. <laughs> so one midlife crisis later, I've now got a Carmen gear to be converted for, uh, to electric. Yeah. And the company that I chose was Electric Classic Cars of Wales. And uh, there's, there's Moggy in the background there, but working his magic. We're here now, um, and I, really the idea was to uh, try to preserve the car in, in a way that made it feel the same as what the car was like originally to mm. drive. So I wanted to keep the gear stick, I wanted to keep the same feel of acceleration and slowing down, but obviously with an electric motor you're going to have a bit more of that. Um, but the whole way of operating the car, so, and I also didn't want it to shout, I'm electric, from the outside. Yep. I wanted it to be... What do they say? A sleeper? Yeah, and, you know, you yeah look absolutely. At it and you go, oh, that's a nice car. And then it goes, and you go, wow. <laughs> um, so that was a little bit of the aspect of it. Although I'm not interested in the traffic light Grand Prix. No. It's kind of interesting because the car came out of the factory with 40 horsepower. So yes, it's considerably to... better now, isn't yeah. it? And um, out of interest, I know this is the, always the question that it really annoys me when people ask it, but I am genuinely interested. What, first of all, what is the range like? in the summer and what's it like in the winter? It's a good question. Um, when I collected the car from Moggy, he said around about 170 miles oh, in wow. what they uh, had measured yeah. on a 40 kilowatt hour battery pack, which is good, um, although the car only weighs about a tonne, just over a tonne with the new batteries in and all the smelly bits gone. Yep. Um, in the summer, I've been able to do for example, I did a run the other day of 150 miles, and I only used 67% of the battery pack. Wow. So that's a 225 mile range, if wow. I could do that driving the whole way. It's, uh, it's, it's kind of the reverse to OEM, you know, how OEM, like, yeah, yeah, get uh, 55 miles per gallon. Uh, <laughs> hmm, hang on a minute, I'll get 35, this yeah. is rubbish. It works out to, what does it say, um, miles per kilowatt hour, 5.5 yeah. miles per kilowatt hour. Which really? Is incredible. But I, was get, that... I was getting three <laughs> out of an Audi RS e-tron. I know <laughs> yeah, which one I've got. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's got a big battery pack, but uh, it's very walled off. But going back to the Carmen gear, uh, a lot of that came from really trying to achieve that. So I'm, I'm driving on the motorway, not really exceeding 60 miles per hour. Yep. Um, 
maybe even doing a bit of slipstreaming behind a big truck or something. It's got but, to be done. Got to be done. You know, and there and back. And, yeah. so, and it was a fair test because I was doing it there and back. But of course, you couldn't do 60 miles per hour, per hour behind a truck all day, every day. No. So. On average, I think I've got about 200 miles. And in the winter, because you've had it for how long now? Electrified? Two years. Is it two years? Yeah. Wow. Um, and in the winter, it doesn't really change very much. Richard originally, Moggy originally said about 170. Yeah. And I can easily get that. You know, if, I tend to be quite economical the way I drive anyway. And so I'm maybe around 180. Rob, this is such a fantastic advert to, <laughs> you know, electrify your classic car. You know, we all know that they're, it's not cheap to do, but you no, know, to see a massive benefit of what everyone always goes on about, which is range. I mean, that's that's awesome. Love that's it. That's right. The main reason for me, though, is to give the car another 50 years lease of life, to have it as a family heirloom, to try and maybe when I'm dead and gone my daughters will be driving around in a hundred year old Volkswagen you know that sort of thing uh, because I, it's not the sort of thing that you do to add value to a car lots of people think of classic cars as oh yeah buy them do them up sell them again maybe sure. make quite a good profit because it might be a rare car yeah but that's not what you do want to do when you're doing electric conversion no it's really to enhance the driving of it and of course everything's going that way and you know fully charged isn't just about electric cars it's about actually you know reduce it stop burning stuff yep as uh, rob likes to say <laughs> um and i haven't met rob yet and i must I must do that maybe tomorrow but yeah i mean it's it's just the message here isn't it it's just the fact that we've got to do something about you know the climate and uh you know even this it's a very small step and we've all got to take a lots of steps but i think it's future proofing the car yeah. most importantly and getting people to see the car on the road where That's right. you know otherwise we're just going to be seeing lots of uh, teslas and stuff like yeah. that but well, yeah um, to convert an existing car that's a lot greener than buying a new car exactly so even if you are using batteries that have existed before or brand new batteries it's still going to be a lot more economic or no, uh, sure. green to convert a and, and also I heard, uh, I think it was Rory Reid on Auto Trade, he was saying that, um, and I think it's already happening in some European countries, that the uh, electric speed limit might be higher in some places than the ice speed limit from an emissions point of view. I think there was an example that he gave, which was in, in Wales, um, they uh, have a 50 miles an hour speed limit sign, just because, or limit, just because of the, uh, the emissions. So electric car, well, if that comes in, I mean, that's going to be... You and me will be happy as Larry. Well, when mine's done, of course. But. <laughs> well, I think you'll be beating me in the TVR. Well, <laughs> it's not done yet. Money. Could but go horribly long like most other TVRs do, you know. <laughs> well, you'll be making it reliable, which is a step forward. <laughs> Thank you. But I think, um, yeah, the speed limit thing, it might be a good incentive. Mm. I think a better way to do it, and it was mentioned before in talks that I've attended today, we should try to make buying petrol cars and diesel cars more expensive i think i was in that one <laughs> so absolutely you know, you couldn't agree more away, you know a few thousand pounds by buying a new car if you're going to buy an electric car but really i think people need to be priced out of the market mm. for buying a new petrol or diesel yeah the government needs to intervene and I, I personally think that after is it cop 26 yep. up in uh, uh, it's Glasgow. Glasgow, yeah. They're, I think I personally think that a lot of things are going to come off the back of that, and I hope they are. But Rob, thank you very much indeed, and uh, yeah, uh, look forward to uh, seeing your car maybe another time. Of course, good man. You have another subscriber. Yeah, <laughs> good man. So we're at the end of the day on a Saturday. Um, perfect time. Now the crowds have gone to show you some of these wonderful cars. Now we didn't get to see the Mazda up close before. But here she is. Apparently it was a bit last minute that they decided to bring it. After my comment about the tyre shine was needed on the car, on the tyres. But look at it, looks awesome. And it's clean, most importantly. And it's an EV conversion, of course. We've got the specific dials. And Zero EV have also brought along their new Porsche 911 kit. There's a battery box there, all the batteries go. 
and the dials. Look at that. EV range on an EV conversion proper. Probably the, oh, it's, it's, there's no probably about it, it's the most comprehensive EV conversion kit on the market. CCS controller. Now gear shift there. <laughs> Charger. Another battery box. And the quality is like spot on. coated large drive unit look at that that's how you know it's come from zero EV and that's the spec there I'm sure you can see it online on the website anyway there we go electric classic car mini 100 brake or 300 brake in track mode uh, 0 to 60 is five seconds how about that 7 kilowatt charger, 150 mile range. All I'm doing is reading the piece of paper there for you. <laughs> oh, you can see it. You can see it in there. It's nicely uh, packed in. Nice and clean. Look at that, nice touch. <laughs> nice roll cage in there. BMW, is it a 2002? 2002? I think that's what it is. Please put in the comments. Oh, there's, hang on, it's here. noises every time I bend down. Okay. Whereas this is <clears throat> 600 horsepower. Another electric classic car, Hyper 9 conversion on this Alpha Spider. It's the spec. 
It's very tight in here. The uh, electric classic car gauges. Heat and Eco and the auto. I mean, all their cars are absolutely immaculate. The paint quality, it's just bang on. Beautiful. Eco Classics met Nick yesterday, lovely chap, and uh, they put Chinese motors in these and uh, with some decent power. Lovely at the spec list in a second. So, left hand drive Porsche 911 in uh, a special green. Look at that, still got a charge head air freshener in the back. <laughs> what I like about this stand is it's cars, there's taken apart cars, there's parts, and there's finished cars. No, they, you're fine. The interior on this is super cool. <laughs> Smells nice too. Doesn't need my air freshener in it. Because the interior's just been done and it, yeah, it smells glorious. But look at the quality, it's lovely. Huh? Also have a few methods and look at this. Another charge heads air freshener. Having spoken to Nick, hoping to actually go and visit the workshop, so that should be very interesting. So look out for that. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, I might have one.
An exclusive for Fully Charged Show 2021 was the fact that a German couple had kindly brought over a Tesla Model Y for people to see, which was the first one in the UK. Now, the word on the street was that Tesla UK weren't best pleased by this. Um, but anyway, everyone got to enjoy checking it out, which was fantastic. And obviously, as soon as they bring it to this country, the blooming better. So that was cool. Uh, but also, the original low. Um, Tesla was here as well. Check this out. Thanks for watching and check out my next video which will be a couple of other shows that I visited this summer.